Hello, Bonavista Baptist Church and any guests that are checking in. This is our Friday checkup for March the 20th, 2020. Last week, my daughter Triona decided to put together a special quarantine survival kit for her friend who was coming back from Australia. Triona knew that she couldn't spend any time with her friend because she was going to be in quarantine for two weeks. Uh, so she put together a special kit of all the essential gifts that you might need to survive two weeks in quarantine. Well, that gave me an idea. It made me think, what are the special spiritual gifts that we need to draw on during this time of self-isolation or physical distancing that we're experiencing during this challenge? And so I want to unpack with you a number of these gifts over the next number of Fridays, and uh, perhaps we can draw some strength from what we have been given by God. The good news is that in 2 Peter chapter 1, we read that God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And so I don't have to deliver these kits to your door. I don't have to assemble them. You already have them if you have the Spirit of God in you because His divine power has already given you everything you need for life and godliness. All we need to do is unpack that. So we're going to start this Friday with the special gift of Sabbath. Now there's three things, there's lots of things we could talk about Sabbath, but three things that I want to leave with you today and hope that you explore them further. The first thing about Sabbath I want us to know is that Sabbath is part of the very fabric of creation. If you read Genesis chapter 1 and into Genesis chapter 2, you'll discover a wonderful poem, a creation poem, a Sabbath poem, really. And in that poem, if you read it out loud, you'll discover that each consecutive day, as it goes from day 1 through day 6, seems to get busier and busier. More and more words are used in the poem. And if you read the poem out loud, by the end of day 6, you're almost out of breath. And then it says, God rested. It's as if the whole of creation, the whole of the universe was coming to life, increasing productivity, increasing activity, and this wonderful um, exchange of God's creative nature coming to life in the world. And then on the seventh day, God rested. And that's the rhythm that's entrenched in creation. Productivity followed by a period of inactivity. And we know this, if, you, if we've ever tried to grow something in a field or perhaps we've been involved in farming or growing something in our backyard, there's a time for planting, there's a time for harvesting, and there's a time when we simply let the soil rest. And if we demand too much productivity out of the, out of the soil, we're going to burn it out. And so there are times for productivity and times of inactivity and that's the rhythm that's entrenched in creation that God gave to us. So perhaps during this time of isolation or physical distancing, perhaps it's an opportunity to realign our rhythm with the very rhythm that's embedded in creation, the rhythm of Sabbath. Well, the second thing we learn about Sabbath is that Sabbath was actually made for humanity. At the time of Jesus, it seemed like the religious leaders formed a lot of rules to try and protect Sabbath. Abraham Joshua Heschel, a Jewish philosopher and writer, calls Sabbath a palace in time. And it was like the religious leaders during the time of Jesus wanted to protect the palace. And so they used rules to form fences and gates and walls and guards, and they carefully guarded the Sabbath to the point where the Sabbath became a burden and not a gift. I think a lot of us within a Baptist tradition or within traditions that don't often talk about Sabbath, we're so worried about slipping back into legalism that we've forgotten to look at Sabbath at all. And so we need to rediscover uh, this time for Sabbath and get beyond the fear of legalism because Sabbath was made for humanity. This is what Jesus said. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Uh, Paul Stevens, uh, my teacher at Regent College, loved to remind us 
that the very first day that Adam and Eve awoke to was not actually a work day. It was a day of rest. Sabbath reminds us that we are made for God, not for work. So often we're so tied to our work in terms of our identity. And perhaps during this time, we can rediscover our identity in God through a time of intentional Sabbath rest. Okay, the third thing, and this is really important for us um, as we discover and rediscover what Sabbath is all about. Sabbath ultimately is found in Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said some radical words to people. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sometimes we forget about this, even when it comes to truth. Truth, we sometimes think, is a set of principles or a statement of faith. And, and there's some truth to that. But ultimately, truth is found in Jesus. He said, I am the truth. And so truth is very relational. It's the same with Sabbath. Sabbath is not about a set of rules. Jesus said, I will give you rest. And so perhaps during this time of isolation or physical distancing, uh, we can find a way to restore our connection to Jesus and so find true Sabbath rest. Well, over the next number of weeks, as you unpacked your spiritual survival kit, um, I trust that you will unpack Sabbath, rediscover Sabbath as an essential gift for this time in our journey together. Well, don't forget to call or email the church if you are in need of assistance or in need of prayer. And especially don't forget to check into the YouTube channel on Sunday, March the 22nd at 10 a.m where you will see our service, not live, but pre-recorded, but we can join together, not in the building, but through YouTube, and we can still worship the goodness of God. Thanks so much for checking in, and we'll see you Sunday.